All right, let's do this. So, this is Matt. You guys probably haven't heard from me in a while here at Game Stitch. Um, but I'm kind of around, I'm kind of back. Um, and I guess this is the first thing I've done in a while. And I'm really only doing it to piss Ryan off because I know that he wanted to be the first one to touch on this game with everybody. But it's my day off and I'm bored. So, here's Project Cars and we're about to press X to start. Um, if anybody out there is unfamiliar with this game, um, you can follow these guys on Twitter at Project Cars Game um, and at Slightly Mad. Uh, I might be at Slightly Mad Studios. That's the game company that made this one. Uh, Namco Bandai published this, and this was on Steam Greenlight since like late 2012, early 2013, maybe. Um, it's been an alpha for most of that time. Um, and one of the really cool things that these guys did with this game is this is a community funded project this thing was pretty much only kept alive on steam for the longest time by the people who wanted to play it so um they really made it for the fans specifically who wanted this very intricate detailed specific kind of racing game which is really cool anyway so if you're into simulation style racing um and that's really the the hardcore sim style forza games uh not really horizon but like the motorsports forza stuff and gran turismo um this is kind of like that turned up to 11 uh, they're insanely hard um and i've only raced a few races online with the guys um, but we'll get a little bit deeper into that because uh it's just uh, it's stupid hard um, there will be uh, monthly DLC, free cars, and a lot of stuff coming out. Um, there's already a pack of five cars that you can buy with the limited edition pack um, for like $2.99 that came out on the day of launch. So uh, a lot of support. There's a lot of content already out there because it was on PC for so long. Um, so if you're into this style racer, uh, go ahead and grab it. If you're not so much and this is kind of your first look at it, uh, enjoy it and uh, hope I don't suck too bad. Uh... Menu's pretty straightforward, I guess, um, and I don't really know what to jump into. Um, let's do some kart racing. Uh, the career is set up a lot differently than what you're used to in some racing games. There's not really a, a money system, and there's not really a... Uh, you don't have to, like, buy a garage full of cars. Every car is available from the start of the game um, to you, which is, I mean, that's kind of different, but that kind of gives it this I don't know the focus is really it's really on the racing so um, I think it comes through in that whenever they give you the cars they let you tune them however you want to but you don't have to spend all this time earning money to buy you know to buy a certain car so if your buddy has this certain car in this certain class you don't have to go you know like hey I'll be back in six hours I could go race 14 races to save up enough money to buy a car in that class you've already got the same cars um, which is cool uh, there's me. I'm number two in the white. And my kart strategy is uh, pretty much my strategy in every racing game. And that's to hit everything without, uh, without destroying my lap time. So here we go. Um, also, I drive manual. So if that pisses you off, I'm sorry. It's the first race of the championship. Try and bring it back in one piece and get some good points. Uh, this is probably my favorite part of the whole game is the helmet cam. Um, it just kind of... I don't know. I always drive first person. This, the idea of, of driving from the helmet is something that I've always thought a racing game needed. Um, and if you can see, I don't know if it's going to translate on the stream... But uh, the visor of the helmet when you're in a cart gets uh, like road dust and wear on it, you know, from where the, the tires break up on the asphalt, which is super badass. Um, when you're in the helmet, the sound's a little bit more amplified. Um, you can hear what your cart is doing a little bit more, um, which is really cool. And this game is the first one that I've ever seen on console anyway. Uh, where they've got a manual clutch that you can configure. So if you're a manual driver and you wanted to assign a button or if you have a, a race wheel that has a clutch pedal, um, you can actually make it so that you have to clutch before you can shift. Um, automatic clutch is on by default if you choose manual. Um, 
but it's it's kind of cool. Uh, I tried it on controller. It's a little bit too finagly. Like eh, there's too much going on. It's too hard to, to manage all the other buttons that you have to. Um, there's also some pretty cool settings you can do with the helmet. One of them is how to what degree does the helmet automatically turn to the apex of the turn. So as you're approaching something like this, the helmet might actually turn before the car does to give you a better idea of where the center of the turn is. Um, I got it turned down pretty low because I found that it was tricking my brain into feeling like the wheel was being pitched when it wasn't and I was overcompensating for steering. Um, all the controller is configurable so if you don't like where the paddles are set for manual gears you can change that. If you don't like the brake and the gas being on the triggers you can change those to where you want to. Um, I like to run the gear shift actually on the, uh, the right stick for up and down. Um, and if you're, if you're not doing a lot of head control, a lot of head movement while you're racing, it works out pretty well. Um, let's see, what else is pretty cool about this game? Um, oh, I like it. You can look down and see the speedometer. You get this tunnel vision effect um, that really messes you up. If you're, if you're not paying attention, you can increase the tunnel vision. So have you ever seen that movie with Sylvester Stallone where he's the Formula One driver? And he gets that um, really extreme tunnel vision um, when he gets kind of like, you know, quote unquote, in the zone. Um, you kind of get that. Uh, the slower you go, the more open your vision is. The faster you go, the more it closes off and you get these blurred outside edges that kind of throw off your, your ability to see anything beyond what the race line is. Um, the race line's pretty cool. Um, it lives right in the dark track on the asphalt. So if you don't want to run with a race line, the track does have, you know, a natural line in it. Um, I just like to, uh, you know, I'm not a professional driver. I've never seen these tracks before. I think it's pretty cool to see the, you know, where your acceleration should be as you're approaching a turn. Kind of helps me out. Your lead over second place is one second. Also, I'm kicking this dude in second place's ass, which I like. Uh, every car feels really different too. I know on carts that doesn't show as much. Um, but once I get done with this race, we'll go into some different stuff. Uh, there's this really cool track that kind of tests every attribute that every car has. Um, and the, the difference in how every car drives is incredible. Um, how they all sound from the helmet, what the cockpit looks like, even um, your ability to see the mirrors from a certain position inside the car. Um, a lot of detail. A lot more detail than I expected to be in this game. I really expected to have... I really expected this to show a lot more like a... And I don't mean to say generic like Forza in that Forza is generic. I mean to say generic in that every car almost feels the same. Like you don't have to really develop much skill to drive any particular kind of car. Um, and this game's totally the opposite. Like your car becomes your car um, you know in in whichever class you're racing so if you really like racing like the Le Mans style prototypes and that becomes the way that you like to drive like you really kind of can lock into that you can really configure your car to your drive style and the game tracks like what's your favorite car what's your favorite track where do you spend the most time how much time do you spend tuning your car are you more of an engineer are you more of a racer um, you can set each race up if you remember Gran Turismo up until 6 they had the b-spec style stuff where you could set up um, you could basically set a driver in the car and then act as the pit manager this game you can do that on the fly in the race so if you don't want to drive the race out or even in career mode if you want to play career mode from a pit manager standpoint you can put an AI driver in it won't record any lap times it won't allow you to uh, enter the leaderboards online but it will allow you to play it 
a lot more from that b-spec style um, since you're not earning any money you know that's more for your enjoyment and less about earning extra money on the side um but you know pretty cool concept pretty cool thing to add to to a game that you know didn't have to have that let's uh let's jump on this really really hard track and we'll race some other car um most everything in the game is an actual track. Um, it exists somewhere in the world, and so if you've played any other race game in the world, you've most likely played these tracks. Um, this particular track right here at 107 turns and almost 13 miles in length really tests your car out and your tuning, and it really helps you get like a balance of handling and braking and then acceleration the first half of it is all tight turns um, it's all about handling and, and how well you can corner wh where you place your value in braking over acceleration and the second half of it is all about how fast can your car top out at what with you maintaining control I cannot drive the first half of this track every time I've ever tried it I wreck the car uh, almost to the point of um, two, two wheels on one side I'll hit the, the cliff edge and be done within the first 10 minutes but let's see how it goes um, if you guys want to, uh, while I'm doing this stream, anybody that's out there watching, and I'll mention this later too, um, you can tweet me at podcast Matt, um, on Twitter. I have that open on my phone sitting right in front of me also. Um, so if you have any suggestions or if you want to see a particular car run on a particular track, or if you want to see me do a certain thing in this game, um, tweet me, or if you want to tweet at game underscore stitch, I'll monitor that side of the Twitter too. Um, let me know what you guys want to see as you're watching this. This is a lot of game. There's a lot of things going in on it, uh, or going on in it rather. Um, and you know, if this is a game that you're thinking about and you want to see a little bit more about what's going on, just let me know what it is you want to see, and I'll test it out to the best of my ability. Uh, I think this might be also. Um, I don't know if, if, if anybody was keeping up with uh, Ryan versus Matt, the hashtag that Ryan and I started uh, a couple weeks ago with that cell phone game one more line by smg studios um, we really fell in love with this idea of the two of us challenging each other throughout the week so i think this would be a, a really cool game uh, we both got it we're both pretty in love with with racing so i think this will be a really cool game to see the two of us kind of have at it in have in at it have at it in let's race this bmw Um, so one of the things that the cars don't have is the ability to like custom paint or do a custom livery or anything like that, but they do have some in the game. Um, they had a pack of 10 that were free and if you see the car that you like, you can then go into your garage and actually grab your car, um, that has your settings, go through and find what paint job you like, and then run that car on any particular track. So... They allow you to they allow you to use your car every time that you run a race, um, but you always have to go in and select it from that point and then just back out and go to the race. One thing that's really cool um, for for this game in particular are weather conditions. Um, and I'm, I'm going to run this one time clean and then I'll come back out and pick another car and run a section of it. Uh, in third person which I, I really suck at but using the chase camera so that you can get a really good idea of like what a thunderstorm looks like as it transitions from weather to weather um, if you look right here you can do one fixed weather event your weather never changes but you can also set it to four and over the progression of the race so basically it will it'll say you have four laps and it will divide those four laps evenly in time and each weather stage that you choose here it will progress between the two so as you complete lap one going into two it will transition these two and two into three will transition these two and so on and so forth you can also adjust that here to offset by such and such percent um i think yeah you have four adjustments one way and then off completely uh the real time seems to work the best and i don't know which one that was i guess that's the two um it's harder for to see it go from one extreme to the other so if you choose clear day 
and the very next one is thunderstorm it's really hard to see that happen um, but if you do you know a kind of a natural progression then when you see you know let's say thunderstorms the most extreme go back into a clear day um, you'll see these really cool like your car stays wet the water on the windshield stays there though the pools of water stay out on the road stuff like that so uh, I really like that it's something that you know it's always been in racing games but you never had this kind of control over it what it's really good for um, not so much for setting up I mean I guess for setting up a race challenge it's cool but find a track that you can run really easily and then use it for the photo mode to take r these really incredible beautiful shots of your car uh, I should stop talking let's run this race boom boom bing bong I'll be checking Twitter during the uh, loading screens because, you know, why not? <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. Uh, I don't know what this car is tuned to. I've never driven this car, so let's just see how it goes, I guess. Um, awesome, the sound glitched. Let's back out, and let's just restart it real fast. There we go. So, here's this car. Some kind of crazy BMW. Sounds badass. Hope it handles well. Uh, let's jump back in for the helmet and see what we get. Oh, I can't tell what gear I'm in. Great. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's loose. She's loose. This track is dumb hard with hairpins. It's all there are at the first half of it. I always catch a tire off on the uh, on the grass somewhere, hit the mountainside, ruin the car, have to start over because there's no pit. You can't go repair the car at any point on this track. Ah shit. Oh yeah, uh, one thing to mention, uh, if you were wondering, it is very possible to blow the engine. So if you redline it and then gear down, uh, nine times out of ten the engine blows and you're stuck in the middle of the road because there's no way to start the car at that point. There's nobody to come get you and there's no, there's no like reset with a brand new car button on the same part of the track. Um, or so far as I know uh, this is on the pro difficulty so you kind of have to take it seriously you can't really bash every car that you want to all the time you kind of have to mind your vehicle and mind your surroundings you can dole out some damage to the cars around you um, as you saw in the kart race you know a little bit of rubbing is racing is good uh, it, it keeps it fun but there's a certain amount that it'll ruin the race for you. Um, in certain race events, I know in career, if you cause you know if you cause a certain amount of cautions or yellow flags, um, there's it, there's a detriment to your score, um, and you can get black flagged from a race for racing dangerously around other cars. So there is there is a rule subset. Um, that's kind of assumed uh, the the developers of the game they, they assume that you know something about uh, racing and race forms whether it's you know Le Mans, Grand Touring uh, 
Formula, uh, Formula One, a a anything like that. They assume that you, you kind of understand the rules of, of the race. Um, when you go through career mode, that's a really good way to get a good idea of what they are if you've never raced that style or if you have no experience watching it. Um, because, oh shit. Because you kind of have a, a guide that will tell you, you know, uh, in, in this particular race type, you know, any touching of another vehicle automatically triggers a caution. You know, make sure you don't trigger too many. They'll black flag you and you're out of the tournament, that kind of thing. Man, I'm about to drop this gearbox all over the road. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I think I'm going to blow this engine. This road's dumb. Stupid people. Guess I can open her up a little bit here. Or not. I like this car. It handles well. Oh shit! This car <laughs> handles well! I like it a lot. Oh no. Headlights. Headlights are cool. There they go. <laughs> you can see the dash flick on when the headlights come on also. That's a pretty cool effect. Cuz why not, you know. All right, here comes the part where you can open her wide up. <laughs> She's maxed out. <laughs> there we go. I think it gets kind of squirrely up here, so I'll probably wreck. Not purposefully, just... Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Speed limit's 45. I'm clearly going well over that. about as dangerous as it gets. Can't check the mirrors because I got the tunnel vision real bad. Can't see a damn thing. Oh no. Woo! Thought we were hitting the wall for sure. There we go. You notice the helmet leans whenever you take a turn to a certain degree. Um, the game has an option to factor in G-Force and helmet lean and camera lean. So if you're in a chase camera, you can also trigger that same effect where basically if your head would naturally lean or if you would, you know, lean to try to trick your body to compensate for, uh, for taking a turn too tight, uh, the game kind of adds to the realism of the experience by doing that for you. This is going to be, or supposedly, this is one of the first games to work with Project Morpheus that Sony has coming out later. Um, and you can see really where it's going to make sense is in this helmet cam. Um, it, you know, I don't see it, I don't see it making much sense to use in the chase cam. Uh, even though you still have all these functions of being able to swivel your head and move the camera in chase cam. Um, the idea of being able to check your mirrors left and right, um, 
without having to reach over and hit the right analog stick. Not only opens up the function of the right analog stick, but uh, kind of adds to the realism that they're going for here. So, uh, excited to see if they actually get that integration the way they had planned. So here's the finish line. Somewhere. So I thought. We gotta be coming up on it soon. There it is. Alright! It's a good run. I'll save that replay. Of course, we went off the track at the very beginning, so our lap time means nothing. Um, let's check the replay out. Not because I like watching this replay, but because you can get a really good idea of kind of all the other view angles um, as you race. So here's bumper cam, roof cam. This is in the cockpit, kind of like at the front of the face mask. This is from the center console. And then here is the helmet. Um, now when you're in each view, you have control of the of the head and the camera. So I'm actually, I'm swiveling the stick right now. So if I want to move the camera while I'm watching this replay, I can. And what that allows you to do is to do these really cool fly arounds of your car. So if you want to get real low on it like this, you can. Um, you can check it out from like a cinematic style angle and we can see right up here where I go flying off the road because I drive like a dumb. Um, you can get rid of the the HUD for that obviously there. Um, but you can also do this. You can pause and you still have a complete control of your of what you're actually, I guess, what you had just played. Really, it's kind of cool what you, because what you're, I guess, what you're really looking at is like a ghost of, like, if you were racing a ghost in a time trial. So what your replay is 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 just that. So you're not. That's why your camera's not tethered. You're not really watching a replay. You're watching the the game's recorded memory of the movements that you made for the car, and then it just recreates it with the 3D models that it has. Which is, because I'm sure that that saves a lot of memory on your PlayStation. That's why the replay loads up so fast. Um, and it gives you a lot more options for, you know, you know as, as a car person to actually come in and, and check out your car. Um, and you also can use this to go back and see problem spots. If, you, if you're looking to get into, like, the community races, um, you're looking to get into the sponsored races and stuff like that that this game has. And that gets into the online, which is this whole other monster um, that Project Cars is. Um, it really gives you this other analysis on how you're racing a particular vehicle on a particular track. And I'm getting into this really complex stuff that this game allows you to do, but here's the real bottom line on this. This game is just fun. So if you don't care about all these different race types, if you don't care about the online or the, the competition of it or the time trials or the this, that, or the other, the bottom line of Project Cars is this is one of the most fun racing games ever. You're not shooting guns, you're not blowing stuff up, it's not Grand Theft Auto, it's not Forza where you're drifting around every turn, not to say that you can't set a car up to do that, but it's really fun to race, it's really fun to race alone and see, to kind of challenge yourself and see how you can do against a track. It's also really fun just to see kind of I don't know. For me, I guess, it, it, for me, it feels like if I got behind the wheel of this car, how good would I actually do? It gives you a chance to, to do that. Um, and, and putting a group of friends together in go-karts, there's nothing more fun. It was really fun in Gran Turismo. And, uh, you know, Polyphony Digital, Digital started that and made it really fun. And Project Cars made it one of the best parts of their game. Um, there's two different kart types, and there's nothing more fun than like just smashing your buddy against a wall in a go-kart.
Um, or taking like a full-size car on a go-kart track, uh, which is something we were having fun with the other night. Well, I guess while we're watching this replay, we can cut it off because we don't need to relive the whole thing again. Let's save it. Well, yeah. Don't forget, if you are watching this stream, you can tweet me live at game underscore stitch. Or if you want to get at me on my personal Twitter, it's at podcast Matt. If there's anything you want to see particularly in the game, let me know. That way I can queue it up and we can take a look at it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, if you want to see me wreck a car at 400 miles per hour into a brick wall, let me know and we'll try that out too. Mm -hmm. Let's pick a track. What we got? This one looks good. Gonna check Twitter real quick while I'm picking a car. If anybody's got a suggestion, throw it out there. I used to like Aston Martins a lot when I first started really paying attention to cars. I thought Aston Martins were the end-all be-all because I was a big James Bond fan. And <laughs> I really used to love the Vanquish, um, which they don't have in this game, but it was kind of a staple car in, in Gran Turismo um, and really any game that featured an Aston Martin. And then the V12 Vantage came out and badass car, but... I don't know. Then that's when Aston Martins just really. I, I guess I realized that they were all looking really cookie cutter, and there was nothing cool about them. Uh, but they're they're amazing cars. I just stopped having that desire to want to drive them virtually. This guy looks fun. The Ford Escort. I would like to take that up against a whole just a whole cart race of nothing but Ford Escorts at some point. Do some open wheel. I don't usually do that well in those though. I liked this little car. I drove it not too long ago. I like this car a lot, this Mercedes. Let's see. Let's try this rascal out. How many opponents can we get on the track? 39. Awesome. Let's do let's do four laps. Let's start messing with conditions. Let's do heavy clouds. A little bit of, uh, cool. Let's do that. And we'll make it move through it pretty quick since we've only got four laps. Or I don't know. Let's give it six laps. That'll go fast. Menu music's great in this game also. I don't know if you guys are paying attention to it. Um but quite in love with it. Whoever worked on this, the music for this game is a genius. I fully expected um, that new jazz kind of thing that every racing game seems to have. And while this is loading, I hope everybody has checked out the official Game Stitch podcast this week. Um, I think this one was the Mother's Day edition this past Sunday, if you're listening to this today, which is Friday, um, and not watching it later on after it's streamed. Uh, I don't even remember what Ryan and Dan talked about, honestly, because they're always talking about stupid shit. But check it out. That's why we love them. Here we go. Ah! Ah, shit. <laughs> I've been wrecked. Let's see if we can catch the fire. Come on, push hard now. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's a disaster. And now the track's wet. 
great. Let's try the chase cam. I can't drive like this, but I like to see the rain effect. It's really pretty. If you're wondering, I have everything on the HUD turned off. Um, that's because when I drive helmet, I don't like to see everything. But um, I guess for this, I probably need some HUD items. I, just, I don't know how to turn them on. This is a disaster. There's no win in this race. I think the front tire is locked up. One of these front tires is locked completely up. <laughs> Oh shit. I don't do well with these cars that uh, if you peg the throttle, the back end comes loose. Here's that really pretty rain that moves up the lens as we move through the air. It's really cool. It gives you a sense that you're actually in the chase camera, whatever it happens to be. Uh, which Ryan and I had a discussion about the other night when we were playing this game. Um, and I tried to explain to him that it's a lot like Super Mario 64. You know, the little guy in the in the cloud that has the uh, that has the camera that follows you around. I have no idea what his name is. I hate Nintendo, but you know that's the idea of how a chase cam works: is that there's a, there's a camera that moves behind it, and so that's why the rain accumulates on the screen because you're you know you're still looking through a lens. But it was lost on him because, as you guys know, if you listen to the podcast, he's kind of dumb. There's damage to the wall when you hit it, which is cool. And, uh, of course I've got some arrow damage. Just hit the wall at 80 miles an hour. Jag off. Car's going just whatever direction it wants to. Just a steady left. So if there's ever a left turn, I've got it made. Probably should have just taken it through the grass right here. Probably would have gotten a black flag, though. Rain's pulling up pretty good. Let's stop and take a look at that. And there you can see it reflecting off the ground in the sun. I'm sure there was a way to zoom the camera to the car so that you could see it on the car. Um, but it also piles up. There you go. Alright, come on, jackass. There you can see it piled up on the fenders of the car. Easily one of the most beautiful games ever. And if you're driving from the helmet cam, here, you, clearly you get the water on your, on your visor. Oh, I'm gonna get hit. Don't hit me, bros. Ah. I turned my headlights on because I'm facing the wrong direction. Also, it's raining, and so you're supposed to. God, this car. <laughs> Every time I touch the throttle, it just gets loose in the back end. There's a blimp up there in the top. The rain's is really coming down. Now you can really see it pulling on the grass and on the road. Look at that. Let's go in here. Let's fix this damage to the vehicle. Aw, oh, shit. Yay, yeah, swing her in. Look at all that water. Holy cow. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. I just got new stuff. I think I have racing slicks on. I don't think I put on all weathers. That must be the problem.
clearly not that I suck at driving. That couldn't be the problem. Let's get in the gravel pit. Can you throw up gravel? You can, but you can cut a donut in it for sure. I like the water that's piled up here, just on the uh, outside of the track. That's great. Oh shit! <laughs> oh no! Ah, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, shit. <laughs> Disqualified for hitting an opponent. There we go. Black flagged. <laughs> oh, no. Now we gotta set the race out. Spend the rest of the time here. Wow. I don't know how these guys are going so fast. I can't keep control of the car, and these guys are just flying through it. Like it's not even raining. Here's the HUD. Um, you can pull this up for your car as you're racing if you really give a shit about it. Um, and I assume all of those readings mean something if you're trying to monitor your car. Or a car, even. Some debris on the road. Let's get at this. How did we get out of this? There we go. Pick a different track. What's the length on that? 12.94. Road America. Johnsonville. Bratz. That's where we're going right there. <clears throat> Here's the uh, Lycan Hypersport from Furious 7. Uh, this car is a waste of time for me. Ryan can handle it. I can't. Every time I touch the accelerator, it does exactly what that last car did, which was spin out uncontrollably. I can't do anything with that. Um, let's see. Let's race the old-timey cars. Like this old Roadster. Where did it go? Let's race this old rascal. Let's make the weather normal. Let's make it random. Let's see what we get. Alright, here we go. Speedville. Be cool if we could drive that fire engine. And one car that's missing from the car list, you may have noticed it if you're a big Nissan fan like I am. There's no Skyline on this game. There's no Nissan at all. So if you like a Sylvia, like a S14, or if you like a Skyline, like an R34, R38, anything like that, one of the new GTRs, um, you're SOL. This game doesn't care about you. Um, however, just to give you a keep nice heads up. Keep your wits about you. Oh. Oh, hang on. Doing all right.
All right, all right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Had a maintenance call. Had a clogged drain in the bathtub. And they took care of that for me. Anyway, uh, I don't even know what's happening with this race. Continental tires. Yay. There's that fire truck we want to race. So let's see if we can get over there too. Where do you think this road goes? Let's check it out. Alright, we gotta stop this rain stuff. Let's race this guy. <clears throat> Ooh, like that green. Like the Lucy. <laughs> Let's see. That green too. I like that. I like that a lot. Let's see. I guess let's go with the Lucy. <clears throat> Let's go. There's really only one place we need to go with this. Only one track we ever need to drive on. <clears throat> While this is loading, if you're just tuning in, you can tweet us at game underscore stitch, or you can tweet me at podcast Matt. Um, if you want to get in a request while I'm playing today, if you want to see a particular car or a particular track or a particular weather condition, or if you want to see me try to flip a car on the spiral of Laguna Seca, which we're staring at right now, let me know. We'll give it a shot. Also, since this is going to keep loading... If you haven't, check out this week's episode of the official Game Stitch podcast. You can find that on iTunes, Stitcher. Uh, I think you can find the past week's episode on SoundCloud. Um, you can also head right over to GameStitch.com, click on the latest podcast episode number, and listen to it right there. And already, mate. don't Focus forget, you can lights. always support... Think about the the first corner. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Protect your lead into turn one. This guy's got to stop talking. You can also always support Game Stitch on Audible through our Audible uh, link and that's audibletrial.com forward slash game stitch. They have a million and a half audio books. Uh, you get a free 30 day trial if you use our link to go over there and try it out. 
So go and do that, grab a book, whatever book you get during your trial, that's free, that's yours to keep forever. If you decide to keep the service, which you probably should, it's a good deal. Um, or if you don't, that's your choice too, free country. Um, it helps us out, so go do that. If you've played a racing game ever, uh, oh shit, look at that. <laughs> if you've played a racing game ever, you've seen this track. This is the, uh, what an asshole. This is the Mazda Motorsports. Look at that guy. He hit that other dude. This is Mazda Motorsports official track, Laguna Seca, here in the U.S. Somebody's breaking styrofoam all over everything. These cars are great. Oh, shit. So... Here's something you may notice uh, while you're watching me drive is sometimes I'll catch the apron. Sometimes I'll catch what I think is the apron, but it's really the sand on the opposite side of the apron. When you do that, uh, the differential goes haywire. It hits the sand, half your car slows down, half of it speeds up, and it makes you turn <laughs> whichever direction the sand is and drive straight into the wall. Here comes the corkscrew. I'm clearly going too fast. Oh no. Oh no. She might have some damage. Yowza! What about this pit right here? Good God! Those poor people. What are they doing? Building a new car? There's the sun. We're gonna go blind staring at it. Finally. Jeez. Take a cone with me. See if we can't run a clean lap at least. We're not going to win for sure, but maybe we get a clean one. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's see what the damage is. Oh, it's bad. Real bad. Oh no. Let's quit this one too. Oh. I wish there was something to progress through besides a career. Um, I feel like maybe that would be something a little more 
<laughs> a little more worthwhile. Uh, we got a tweet from Ryan, who's at work right now. He says, nice drive, and remind me never to ride with you on a supercar during a thunderstorm. So, uh, if you guys aren't following Ryan during this, it's at Podcast Ryan, and he'll probably be saying some really stupid, hateful stuff also. Just checking the old Twitter Twitter while it's loading. If anybody hasn't tweeted us or isn't uh, following us on Twitter already, that's at game underscore stitch. You can follow me at podcast Matt. Uh, and then you can follow the official game stitch guys. That's at podcast Ryan and at Tollhurst 2002, which seems like it would have been easier to be at podcast Dan, but I think somebody already took it. So tough luck, Dan. <clears throat> Look at her. Look at her. Let's try and make up some ground here off the lights. Keep it clean and keep your wits about you. Oh no, this is already bad. This car is crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh Jesus. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so here's something I had a concern with the other night. Maybe anybody watching can answer this for me. Um, here's my analogs, the triggers. Uh, not pressed and then here it is pressed by like half a millimeter there's no like there it is if I barely feather it I can get a gradation so there's no way to not cut a donut in some of these cars um, and it's very much one of those you need a wheel and pedals to get a feel for or you're going to be doing a lot of what I'm doing right now, which is spinning out and not doing much. There's not a lot... I don't know, it doesn't seem like there's a lot that connects some of these cars to the ground. I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's the car or, or the... I don't know if that's the... I mean, I guess it could be something in the settings for the controller. But if anybody else out there has this that has a, a fix for that, for why some cars seem to be able to be controlled really easily, and some cars it seems like the throttle just, it's either wide open or completely off, um, I would love to know. Because, let's see, what was that last, what was that Mercedes that we raced earlier? Was it the Mercedes? Maybe it was a Ford. I don't know. We raced a car a, a while ago. It was Beamer. We raced this BMW here. Where is that? We raced this BMW here earlier. Handles like a dream. Have no idea why this car handles particularly well versus the Ford that we just did. Um, but there's a drastic difference in the two cars. And I don't mean that to sound like all cars should handle the same, but sometimes it's so drastically different that I don't know what to begin to tune to make them feel similar to the way that I like to drive. Let's try... What is this?
I really like this track right here for testing cars. Um, and oh, here's something we can take a look at. Um, I don't know of a way to... A, to set up like a... Let's say that I wanted to set up a track that was going to be my standard timing track. I'm going to like I'm going to use this track every time to make sure that this car runs the way that I like it to and this car runs the way I like it to and so on and so forth. Um, so that when you pit you have access to a, the full range of the of of the attributes for the car. So if you if you look into your garage here, let's say I'm looking at this car, you can create a new setup and here you have access to the tire pressure which you have access to when you pit but here you also have access to brake pressure brake balance um, and the brake duct um, con traction control if you have it available um, you have access to that also um, if you look at the summary there's toe and camber angle and downforce um, and sway bar adjustments that can be made also. There's also adjustment to the suspension that looks like it can be made if you look at like your um, ride heights, your spring rates, stuff like that. I don't see any adjustments for those. So I don't, I don't know how quite to go ahead and do that, but it also says at the bottom, it says you can, uh, it says create or edit your tuning setup and troubleshoot your issues by asking your engineer. I also don't see how to do that. It seems to be one of those aspects of the game that would be very, very important. And I don't see at all how to... how to make those adjustments. So let's say that I jump in here and I'm just going to run indefinitely on this to try to tune the car and I, I would have thought that time trials would have been the the way to do that but I've yet to see that full access to the to the tuning features of the car besides tire pressure and how the brakes respond in very simple terms If you look at the tuning setup here, you're still looking at the same the same adjustments. There's no change here. I see that there's a asymmetrical and symmetrical setup. But I don't see the way to Oh, there's, okay, so there's a way to adjust the sway bar. Or so, so I thought, there you go. Hmm. Don't know, don't know. But we gotta turn these headlights on for show. Great, I got the sun in my eyes. I can't see anything. Oh no.
Oh no. Oh shit. What has happened? Well, that's a good looking lap right there. I'll take that one. Oh yeah, I forgot we were going to pit. I love this car. I like this car a lot. Sounds good too. So here's where you can adjust your, like when you hit the pit, you can adjust if you've messed, like if you feel like something's wrong with the car, basically. Um, you have how much fuel you're going to refill, 
um, whether or not you're going to change the tires, what your tires are, and then you can adjust the barometric pressure in each tire. Um, so these are maybe this is the difference between some of the cars that feel loose to me. Is this this tire pressure seems really low. Um, now you can go here and grab like let's say let's say I, I feel like I'm slipping and sliding a little bit too much. Let's try soft tires. Let's see what we get. Um, I feel like it's not so much that the front end's coming loose or the back end's coming loose. I feel like I've just got a little... I, I mean, I guess it is that the front end's coming loose. I got a little bit of understeer. So let's adjust this just a little bit. And then if you do or don't want to adjust or to change any of this, if you, if you don't want to replace it, um, you can adjust this if you notice on this screen there's a time at the top of 37.2 seconds it'll tell you how long it takes these don't affect that so you can adjust them on or off every time um, they don't really seem to to change what's going to happen now let's say that i wanted to see a computer controlled driver you do swap driver and an ai driver takes over um, don't forget to close this see if any of those adjustments help this car handle a little bit more the way that I want it to. Oh yeah, seems to have helped with the understeer for sure. Got a little bit more grip with the soft tires. Now of course if you're racing for a long time, this, this game, your tires wear, you have to account for that. And as you saw whenever we, we took our pit stop, you have fuel consumption. So the more clearly the more air you take out of your tires the the more tires touching the ground so the the more you're kind of depleting your tire resource um, you're also having to use more fuel to travel slower essentially um, by adding more grip so you have to account for how much fuel you actually have in the car also but I kinda like that setup it's not bad real good looking car real nice paint job Also, you can burn them off. Yeah, you can also wreck real hard. The damage modeling is great. Um, you can see there. Uh, there's also damage to the surroundings, so when you hit guardrails and stuff like that, you're going to see the damage reflected there, which is nice. I feel like we might have some pretty serious damage. guess let's hit this little ditch and see what we can do handbrake handbrake doesn't do anything in this game just between us
Headlights still go down, we're good. I think we've lost the bumper. I think she's stuck. Oh, hey, there is a reset button. It doesn't reset any damage, but if you get stuck, it'll put you back on the track. That's nice. Pop the gear. Girl. Lights still come up? Hell yeah, they do. It's an outhouse. Got some smoke. Got some smoke. Engine blown. Engine blown. Let's put her on the track and get her in neutral. Let's see if we can roll her back home. Or if we can get to the pits. Stop. All right. So let's try one more thing here. Let's try a couple more stuffs. If you're still watching the stream, thank you, thank you. We're going to check out a couple more things before we call it a day. 
feel free to tweet us at game underscore stitch or if you want to send something to me that's at podcast matt if you want to see your particular car or track or if you want me to try something stupid just let me know we'll do it i've never gone online oh it's just multiplayer session That's pretty cool. The online events, those are nice. There are prizes that are uh, issued for winning those. If you see there, you're competing for a chance to win Thrustmaster stuff, so probably a race wheel. <clears throat> That's nice. So if you're into online competition, uh, you can definitely do that there. What is... Um, you know, I think I'll save the rest of it for multiplayer. That way Ryan and I can get into it, um, the next time that we are, um, the next time that we are online together. So if you guys, uh, if you guys enjoyed this, give us a tweet at game underscore stitch or at podcast Matt. Um, let me know what you thought about it. If you're going to pick up project cars because of this, or if you have project cars and you want to play uh, a round or two with me and Ryan, um, and a couple of buddies, um, just tweet us on there. Uh, the next time we go live with this game, hopefully it'll be for some multiplayer stuff so Ryan and I can maybe do a versus or if you guys wanted to, uh, if we wanted to do like a community session, everybody that has the game that might want to hop on and play, uh, just let us know. Anyway, uh, don't forget to run over to GameStitch.com, check out the latest episode of the official Game Stitch podcast, follow us on Twitter, um, and as always, check out the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, um, rate us, like us, subscribe, check out that Audible link, and we'll see you next time we do some stuff. Thanks, bye.